Easter, we continue to say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. For Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessings to you today as we come together and worship our Lord on this second Sunday of Easter. Beautiful day. It's a wonderful time for us to gather together and return our thanks and give praise to the Lord for all that he has done for us. Several announcements uh, to you today. Uh, first of all, just a couple housekeeping things. Uh, if you have a cell phone on you, we would ask that you would turn that off, shut that off, or put it to mute or vibrate so it doesn't interfere with us in our time together in worship. And then later on, make sure you turn it back on. That's a good thing. Um, that's greatly appreciated. And then also guests, we would ask that you would uh, do what we have our members do each time we gather together is we uh, write our, our record our attendance in our record of fellowship. We do that as a way to uh, just record uh, uh, for our records. It makes it easier for us. Um, and then also for members today, don't forget to check the box if you're planning to commune with us. And I'm going to take just a moment to explain something to you. Um, for community. That's why this is uh, left open here for a second. Uh, we've had recently, we've had the, the uh, we've had the trays refinished, and with that, they're a little sticky. Some of you uh, realized that uh, last week. So when you come up for communion, I would encourage you, if your cup is sticking, grab one side of the cup, just one side, just like this. Lip it like that. Okay, don't try to grab both sides. If you grab both sides, it just makes it worse. We are aware of the situation. We're going to be working to get it rectified. But for today, if your cup sticks, just wiggle it and grab it on one side. Good? Good to go. Okay, very good. You should be good. Or you could do what I do and you can take the common cup and that's fine. No problems there. Whatever, whatever, whatever you like. Okay, also from your bulletin, a couple things for you to be aware of. Um, we are going to be starting by the end of the month here, our new membership class. I've talked with several of you, several of you have been, are interested in this. Uh, for many of you who have been attending with us for a while, but are still uh, guests, um, you won't necessarily need to take the class, but if you do, and I've talked to you, or if you're curious about it, don't, and you haven't called the office yet, you can call the office, you can call tomorrow uh, or any time this week, leave your contact information. I will be getting a hold of you, either Lisa or I will be getting a hold of you when we're gonna start our class. It should be by the end of the month that we'll get started for our new membership class. If you know somebody that's interested in becoming a member um, and they, they have some questions about that, encourage them to contact me. You can call me on my cell phone. You can text me. You can email me any way you like so we can get that taken care of and we can get you in our membership roles. That would be wonderful. Also, um, note that uh, now that Lent is over, we've celebrated Easter and that uh, celebration continues uh, through for the next several weeks. Uh, we have also are resuming our Wednesday night worship of, of WOW, our worship on Wednesdays. That's at 6 o'clock Wednesday nights. And what WOW is, it's a um, more relaxed, uh, contemporary, perhaps you could use that word, time where uh, we use that kind of praise worship music. But it's a, if you miss on Sundays, it, it is a opportunity for you to come on a Wednesday after and worship with us. So the service on Wednesdays will be following, will be the same theme as the Sunday before. I want to encourage all of you to come check it out. Uh, Deidre is an amazing musician, as is our wonderful organist up there who's only halfway paying attention. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, she's got music in front of her. That's right. Pastor, stay focused. Okay. Um, anyway, so come check out WOW sometime and see what you think and invite your friends to come Wednesdays at 6. Uh, those are the announcements I have. Don't forget about the benefit dinner as well coming up for Jacob. This is uh, Mrs. Earl's uh, son that will be going on at Grace at the end of the month. You can read the rest of that in your bulletin. Uh, don't, uh, and don't forget to take a look at your bulletin. There are other good announcements in there, but those are the announcements that I have for you this morning. Any other announcements as we begin?
Let's stand, let's greet each other in the name of the Lord as we begin. Sometimes. Our service this morning begins on page 151 in the front of your hymnal. It's also printed in your bulletin. I ask that you would please stand as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the responsive reading of Psalm 105. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation... 
O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Glory in his holy name. Seek the Lord and his strength. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. He remembers his covenant forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it they may, you may grow up to salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. At this time in our service, we are continuing to have our eighth grade confirmant students 
uh, share with us their faith statements. This morning, we have for us Mr. Owen Kundinger. So, Owen, if you would please come forward to share with us your faith statement. My name is Owen Cunninger. My confirmation verse is John 8, verse 12, which says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I chose this verse because it shows me that as long as I trust in God and believe his word, he will make a path for me to everlasting life with him. This verse also shows me that no matter what's going on in my life, whether I'm having a good day or a bad day, everything happens for a reason. You may not see the good on the other side of the bad day, but as long as you trust in the Lord, He will light up your path and lead you in the right direction. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11 says, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. God has provided me with a Christian education here at Trinity, and I will use this foundation of faith when faced with challenges. I know God will be with me in high school and lead me in the right direction according to my faith. God will help me not to be nervous or worried about the future because he has already planned the future for me and has lit my path. When I'm faced with difficult challenges and feel hopeless or question my faith, I know I can go to God to ask for guidance on my path. I know God will help me make the right decisions, choose the right friends, and eventually find the right job. I think the verse, Romans 8, verse 28, summarizes this very well. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Moving on from Trinity, I know the Lord will be my solid foundation. He will light up my path and take my worries away, leading me to everlasting life with him in heaven. Let's praise the Lord for Owen's words today. Excellent work. Praise God, Owen. Thank you so much. Uh, Our statements of faith from our confirmands will continue. Confirmation Sunday is the first Sunday of May. I think it's the fifth. Um, And so um, we look forward to Owen in his confirmation and his wonderful class. Great group of kids this year. So we look forward to hearing more from them in the next coming weeks and also for this confirmation of faith that's coming in just a couple weeks. Our first reading for today comes from Acts chapter 4. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said uh, said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many were owners of lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle for today comes from John's first letter to the church, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest that we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. 
If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia and verse. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. This will also be the basis of our message today. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. But if you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, Make Songs of Joy.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, bless us today as we gather here this morning. Help us to pay attention. Help us to grow in our faith. Be with us and send to each one of us here this morning your Holy Spirit. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever been told to stop doing something? Stop it. Quit that. Stop doing that. In school, we're being told to stop. Stop talking to the person who's sitting next to you. Pay attention. Stop sleeping during the sermon. Stop. <laughs> Got you there. Stop this. Stop that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, trying to get people to stop doing things in my household these days. Hey, stop poking your sister. Hey, stop kicking your brother. Stop this. Stop that. In the story of Jesus, the account that we read from our gospel today, it's a familiar account, his appearing to his disciples after the resurrection, remember what Jesus says to one of his disciples. He told them, Thomas in particular, to stop doing something. In our translation today, it says, do not disbelieve, but believe. And more familiar, perhaps, older translations of Scripture say, stop doubting and believe. Jesus didn't say to Thomas, he didn't say stop talking or stop messing around. But on Easter night, Jesus appeared to his disciples and one of them was missing. And it was Thomas. When Thomas shows up about a week later, well, when Thomas shows up later that night, he does not believe that they have in fact seen Jesus, and that Jesus was in fact alive. And he says his famous words, unless I see Jesus with my own eyes, unless I touch his wounded hands and his side, I will not believe. Thomas wants proof. Thomas wanted visible, touchable, tangible proof that Jesus was alive. And then about a week later, we get to the crux of the story. It's the Sunday after Easter, and Jesus appears again to the disciples, and he again says to them, peace be with you. And this time Thomas is with them, and Jesus tells him what I've been sharing with you, to stop. Stop doubting and believe. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And then Jesus speaks these famous words, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So we listen today and we think about what Jesus has said to Thomas and what he also says to us. Stop doubting, and believe. So what is it that causes doubt, disbelief? What is it that causes us then in turn to believe? How can I be someone who has never seen Jesus in my entire life and yet strongly believe in him? How, how can I be that person, a person who can put their trust and faith in my living Lord and yet never have seen him? These are some of the questions that we'll be considering this morning in our time together. Whenever we hear this account, we say to ourselves, I would never be like that Thomas. He was silly not to have believed. He should have listened to the other disciples. I would have been one that would have believed right away. I would have been one of the strong disciples. Is that really what would have happened for you? You wouldn't have been skeptical? 
Have you ever thought about how much you and Thomas have in common? You do. You and Thomas both have had Christian educations. For you, it's been years of perhaps Sunday school and confirmation class, and even for many of you, Lutheran day school, maybe even some learning at home that's been given to you by your parents and possibly even grandparents. But Thomas had a better Christian education than you do, some would say. For three years, he was one of those 12 disciples. What an amazing Christian education he had. He was able to watch and listen to everything Jesus said and did right there while it happened. Everything you've ever read in the Bible and more because more happened than is recorded. That's what our gospel says. And Thomas was there. He was one who saw these things firsthand. He saw it all. He heard it all. He asked Jesus questions. He talked about Jesus with the other disciples. He had one of the best Christian educations a person could ever have. And yet here he is in our text today, doubting. Even with all your Christian education. Haven't you had a moment of doubt? Do you really believe all this stuff? Why am I a Christian anyway? It is perhaps because my parents were Christian. I come from a Christian heritage. Is there really a heaven? Is there really a Jesus who died and rose from the dead? Do I really believe all this? Have you ever had a moment of doubt? What causes this doubt? Well, for Thomas and for us, it's often the same thing. You see, Thomas saw things and heard things that made him feel like he had put all of his trust in the wrong place. He saw Jesus arrested even though Jesus was all-powerful. He saw Jesus tortured and shouted at by the crowds and crucified even though Jesus was God and he could walk on water and calm storms and heal people of their diseases. Thomas saw Jesus die even though Jesus could raise people from the dead. None of this made any sense. These things Thomas saw and heard gave him feelings of confusion and disappointment and sadness. All of these things made him feel like he had put his trust in the wrong place. That's why he's so skeptical when the other disciples tell him that Jesus is alive. That's why he doubted. Isn't that why you and me too, why we doubt Sometimes, yes, I've had a Christian education. Yes, I could get an A on most Bible quizzes. I've been taught to trust God, to trust Jesus. But sometimes I see things. I hear things. I experience things. Bad things. And it feels like maybe I've put my trust in the wrong place. For example, a loved one dies, and it was a particularly bad situation. It was too early, or there was too much pain and suffering. The whole thing makes me doubt that God is, in fact, wise and loving. And I see the world, and it's a mess. People are starving. People are hurting each other. The bad people seem to be so successful in what they do. The good people seem to struggle. Less and less people seem to believe in Jesus or even to care. 
The whole thing makes me doubt that God is in fact powerful and that Christianity really even matters. Is there really a God? Is Jesus really risen from the dead and living and ruling eternally? Have you ever seen things or experienced things that have caused you to wonder if you have put all your trust in the wrong place? Have you ever been like Thomas? Don't you wish you could have visible proof that everything that you've ever been taught is true? That's what Thomas wants. Give me something, God. Show me something so I know that you're real. Just one miracle. Maybe not a miracle. How about just answering my prayer with an obvious yes, Lord? Let me know that you're there. Do something and I'll believe. What is the cure for doubt? Well, John chapter 20, Jesus himself is the cure for doubt. When Thomas was standing face to face with Jesus, it changed him from, I will not believe, in our translation, I will never believe, to my Lord and my God. Being face to face with Jesus takes away doubt. How does that work for us today? Jesus isn't going to appear, probably not, visibly appear to you today and tell you to stop doubting and to believe. If he could, he could certainly do this if he wanted to. But instead, he says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's you. How can I believe without seeing? What is the cure for doubt today? Well, you have to go to the most underrated place in the whole world. When you have your doubts, you need to stop doubting and start walking across the room in your house to that old bookshelf and the, and the devil will say to you, no, don't do it. Don't go there. It won't help you. You're almost across the room. The devil says, what you're about to do is a waste of time. You pick up your old Bible. Maybe it's your confirmation Bible. You carry it to your couch and you sit down. And the devil says, maybe there's something on TV that you can watch. Don't you remember how boring the Bible is? How it doesn't make any sense, so don't read it. You get to the couch and you sit down and right before you open it, the devil says, don't trust this book. It's all made up. It's a fairy tale. There are mistakes in there, you know. And then you do something that you've done before, maybe countless times, but you do it again. You open that book, your Bible. You really don't have a plan. You just kind of start reading where it flops open. And as you do... The words of the devil seem to fade away. Your doubts start to go away. You relax and you wonder why you didn't do this a long time ago. You read the Bible with an open mind and you, you understand that the world's still a mess. And yes, you've experienced disappointment and pain in your life, but as you read Scripture, you find comfort there. You find hope and you come across familiar verses that you remember from the past that have been meaningful to you and they take on a new fullness and a new meaning in that moment. You see the page of Scripture that you have opened to, no matter where it is in that Bible, that page is the face of Jesus. 
you look at that page and you read those words and you're looking into the face of Christ. The same John who writes our gospel today writes at the beginning of that gospel, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. You look at that page and read those words, you're looking into the face of Christ. And He's speaking to you. And it's just as real as that moment that Jesus is speaking to Thomas and Jesus says to you, stop. Stop doubting and believe. There on that page of the Bible, Jesus speaks to you and your faith gets bigger because His Word is living and active. And your doubts get smaller, and you do believe. Now, I don't know if it's possible to ever be completely free of doubt on this side of heaven. It seems just when one of those doubts goes away, another doubt kind of comes in and fills the vacuum. We will always be struggling with different doubts as long as we live in this sinful, broken world. We will have good days and we will have bad days. We will believe because we have the Word. But that doubt likes to cling on to us. But we remember God's Word. That's where Jesus helps us to believe even though we can't see Him. He's just as real as the oxygen you breathe, right? He breathes on those disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit. He's just as real (laughs) as the cell phone signal that I tell you to shut off. You can't see that signal. You can't see the call coming in from great grandma and Timbuktu but you know that she's there on the other end of the line. I've never seen him before, but I believe that he is who he says he is. He is God in the flesh. He's the God-man who died on the cross as a sacrifice to take away my sins and the sins of the world. I never seen him before, but I believe that he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven as scriptures attest to. I can't prove it to you, but I do know that there's a heaven. I know that someday I will rise from the dead and so will you. And even though it goes against science and logic and everything that I've seen, I believe it. And I believe it all, even though I can't see it, and I can't touch it, I can't prove it, I can't explain it. But I believe it. Even if everything in the world tells me the opposite, I still have faith. And sometimes I have faith because everything in the world tells me the opposite. Will you join me? Will you do the same? Will you walk across the room? Will you open your Bible again and again? Every single page of Holy Scripture is the face of Jesus looking at you. Keep your eyes on Him. Listen to Him. That's how you keep your faith in this twisted and broken world. That's how you believe. You let His Word work in your heart, in your life. You see His Spirit at work. You see, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are you, good friend in Christ. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive us for those times when we have doubted. Fill us with a strong and confident faith in you each and every day of our lives. Thank you, Jesus, 
for your life, death, and resurrection. Thank you for the sure and certain hope we have, eternal life with you. We love you, Jesus, and we trust in you. In your name, amen. Our service today continues as we confess our Christian faith, and we're going to do that in the words of the Nicene Creed. You can find that printed on page 9 of your bulletin. I ask that you would please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven. crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scripture, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand. Again with glory, judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. In our prayers of the church today, we want to remember especially uh, continued prayers for our teacher, Miss, uh, Mrs. Suzanne Tomaszewski. We ask that the Lord would continue to bless her as she recuperates from her heart surgery. Uh, she's progressing in the right way, uh, little bit by little bit each day. So we pray for God's continued strength and healing for Suzanne. We pray as printed in your bulletin. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope and life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, save and defend your whole church purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, Send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, preserve our nation in justice and honor that we might lead peaceable lives with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially our president, our governor, and our local elected officials. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, by your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all those who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. We pray especially today for Mrs. Suzanne Tomaszewski. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless Mrs. T as she grows in her strength. Keep your healing hand upon her that she would be physically restored according to your will. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near, especially those that we name in our hearts. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant 
to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church here on earth, who now rest from their labors, especially, again, those that we name in our hearts. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. We now gather our tithes and offerings. Please stand for the offertory. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father everlasting God, and most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you have created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. 
With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends in Christ, now hear the words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us our trespasses. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our trespasses. To temptation. But the Lord is For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and precious blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in peace and know that your sins are forgiven. Amen. We conclude our time together today with Thank the Lord. You can find it on page 17 in your bulletin. It is in 164 in your hymnal. I ask that you would please stand as we sing. pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated as we close with number 475, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing.